If bad level design has a name, it must be Wave 9 from the NES version of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This so-called wave is an epic clusterfuck of misery and boredom wrapped in a big stinky brown package. So anyway, let's get into it. Levels from Hell, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom for the NES, Wave 9. When you start out the ninth wave, it seems fairly innocuous at first. Oh sure, there's still the usual crap that this game throws at you. The endless thuggies, the spike traps, these annoying bats that stun you, magic fucking rocks that appear out of nowhere, and these instant kill lava slabs to top it all off. But if you got this far in the game, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting past them. Once you get to the middle of the wave though, the real hurting begins. Now you would think that the game designers might try to be faithful to the source material. You know, maybe beat up some thuggies at the altar and save Willy from getting turned into a human hot pocket. Or at least have a badass fight with the head thuggy on the rock crushing belt. But what does this game throw at you? Monsters popping out of lava. And no, I'm not joking. This is literally what the game expects you to do. You have to stand on one of six conveyor belts. Six, mind you and wait for monsters to pop up out of the lava. When they do, you kill them with a knife, a bomb, or a gun, and they form a bridge across the lava. I have just one question. What motherfucking glue-sniffing game designer thought this was a good idea? I mean, seriously, think about it. Could you imagine the movie version of this? Like having Indy standing around waiting for some monsters to pop out of some lava. Could you imagine how boring the film would be as a result? This is Temple of Doom, not waiting for Godot! I really wish I was making this shit up, sports fans, but I'm not. It's that fucking bad. Oh, but it gets worse, like it always does. You have to go to the correct conveyor belt and wait for some heads to pop up. But sometimes they'll pop up too far away to be useful. Oh, and if you think you can just hop across the heads, that won't work either because the way the jumping is designed. Nor will walking diagonally onto a monster head. But that's not even the best part. Like I said earlier, there's six of these belts. And it seems like the heads pop out totally at random. So sometimes you can stand in one spot forever and never get anywhere. Plus, the game doesn't give you any clue as to which belt or belts are the correct ones. And this same shit applies to the belts in the later part of the level. From what I can see, it's completely random. You just take a wild guess and hope for the best. What's even worse though is when the game decides to get cute and not give you the monster heads you need to complete the bridge. Jesus cocksucking Christ! This is like the perfect example of a level from hell! Not just because it looks like hell, but also because it feels like the devil is ass-raping me with a flaming pitchfork! Worse still, before you begin, you have to make sure that you have a ton of bombs, guns, and knives in your inventory. Because if you run out, you're stuck and fucked. And you can't go back for more weapons, so forget about that. Gee, thanks a lot, game. Why don't you just piss on my face for an encore? Anyway, moving on, the bombs and guns are useful for taking out monsters that are far away, while the knife is good for ones that are up close. But don't use the whip, because it'll only drive them back under the lava. However, it doesn't matter if you're successful in making a bridge or not, because these thuggies and bats will keep on bothering you, and bothering you, and BOTHERING YOU! For fuck's sakes, isn't this cocksucking bridge shit enough aggravation already?! I mean, what's next?! Are they gonna start dropping tactical nukes on Indy?! ENOUGH IS ENOUGH! Okay, so let's say by some miracle from heaven you manage to make a bridge and cross it successfully. You can't just leave yet, oh no! You have to go get the Sankara Stones! Alright, points for that because at least they got that part of the movie right. But of course you still get bombarded by 18 FUCKING MILLION ENEMIES! Oh, and the rocks aren't in the skull like the movie. They're just sitting in between Kali's legs like she plopped them out of her twat or something. Look, fine, whatever, I don't care, they can come out of her nose or her ass or whatever part of the body they want, just as long as this fucking level gets over with fast. Alright, so you get the radioactive kidney stones, you get to the exit, and you finally, FINALLY get the fuck out of this nightmare level! Holla fucking luya! Now before I wrap this review up, I do want to mention one small positive about this level. Namely, that there's a shortcut. If you collect a key in one of the previous waves, you can go through the level's first door and appear on the island near the end. Which does make it a tiny bit easier to cross, assuming that the fucking heads actually pop up. And that's the only good thing I can say about this wave, aside from the fact that it ends. Overall, playing this level is about as fun as attending a fart convention. And if I ever have to meet Kali in hell, I won't have to prepare for it.
because I've already been there. So in conclusion, this level can go fuck off. And if there are any of you sadistic assholes out there who want me to cover Wave 10, forget it. That level is somehow even worse than this one, and I'd like to keep what little is left of my sanity if that's alright with you. This is Film and Stuff signing off. Thanks for watching. Jesus cocksucking Christ! This is like the perfect example of a level from hell!